Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Let's put our hands together in appreciation of the choir. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Praise Jesus. You may be seated, church. My task here is to share a quick charge, but before I go any further into that, I want the church to join me and celebrate our father. <laughs> Pastor Kola, thank you for standing up. <laughs> thank you. Celebrate our father. Please, and let us celebrate our mother. Yes. Father, we, we thank you, Jesus, for today. We give you glory and praise. We pray that you will reveal your word to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Toye said something key this morning. He said that we have unofficially been launched into a season of praise jubilee. Unofficially. And God has been dealing with me personally in that area. My wife and I were privileged to speak with somebody a couple of weeks ago, and he was praying for us, and he said, he looked at me and said, Micah, you're not thanking God enough. That statement shocked me. I went home, and my wife kept rubbing it in. So you're not grateful. You're not grateful. <laughs> so you're not grateful. You're not a grateful person. And I said, ah, but I'm thanking God. And then it dawned on me that I'm thanking God, but I'm not thanking God as I should. And we have come into a season where we ought to thank God, where we absolutely owe God gratitude. So in, in, um, in 1863, Abraham Lincoln proclaimed what we celebrate every, every November as Thanksgiving. And from then, since then till now, America has celebrated Thanksgiving in November. On, on, for one year, it wasn't celebrated. In November, because the president, Andrew Johnson, in 1865, forgot. So Thanksgiving was celebrated in December that year. Many of us are like Andrew Johnson. We tend to easily forget. When it's hot, when the weather is hot, we are complaining, oh God, this heat is too much. When the weather is cold, we are complaining, oh God, this cold is too much. It is difficult to satisfy us. We hardly stop to say, Father, I thank you. For this situation, I thank you. And it is in the season of thanksgiving that God releases instructions for the next level. I remember my wife and I were praying for a job that I had applied for back in Nigeria. And this job was going to financially change our lives at that time. We far left that level. So we, I applied. I was the most qualified for the job. I was the most favored for the job. It was an internal job, so everybody in the company knew me. But suddenly, it looked like it was going to someone else. So we started praising God every 12 midnight. We would praise and praise and praise. We did that for several weeks. And at the end of the day, the job was given to a non-Christian. So I said, God, what is going on? But it was in that season that God gave us instruction for the next level. And it was in that season that God said he was going to reduce time for us. I cannot begin to tell you how much God has reduced time for us. It was in the season of thanksgiving. The Bible said that Jesus was going down a village. The village was unnamed in Luke chapter 17. And then he saw 10 lepers. So leprosy was a disease that when you catch it, you are separated from others. And these 10 lepers gathered amongst themselves. Isn't it strange that when people have issues, they gather among themselves? <laughs> if if you see a lot of drama around your life, look at yourself. <laughs> they gathered amongst themselves. And when Jesus saw them, they did something. They shouted. We have come into a season of shouting. Sometimes it is good. It, it is good to be cute. I like to be cute sometimes and stand and pray with finesse. But when it's painful, when it pinches you, they said it, you will scream. Church, it is time to scream in gratitude. The, the Bible says that they screamed, Master, Master. They encountered God at a different level. 
I, I can't begin to delve into that story. We don't have enough time. But Jesus said something. When we think about that scripture, leprosy was a case that if somebody is confirmed leprous, before they are released back into the society, they need to go to a priest to confirm that they have been healed. But Jesus told them to go to a priest before they were healed. Somebody missed it. So those guys decided to go to Jesus even when they were in the state of leprosy. Their healing had not been confirmed, but they still went to get the confirmation. God is going to confirm everything that is missing in Jesus' name. Jesus said they should go to the priest. We know the story. We are Bible scholars. Only one of them came back. Today, God is asking, where are the other nine? I pray for you that nobody here will be part of that nine. Amen. Amen. Thanksgiving is so critical in our lives as Christians. You see that increase that we are praying for? That increase is tied to Thanksgiving. In, in John chapter 6, Jesus Christ was preaching. And like most preachers, he had preached into the night. And then when he realized that time had gone, it was probably a Sunday, so Chick-fil-A must have closed. So they couldn't go out to get food. And then Jesus Christ said, okay, what do we do? How do we feed these people? And then one little boy had some crackers and sardines. And then Jesus Christ took it. Let's go to that scripture. John chapter 6. My department will work with me today. <laughs> John chapter 6. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay, I would read. Um, John chapter 6, I will read from verse 11. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the, of the fish, as much as they wanted. Please, can anybody tell me when the bread and the fish multiplied? Even the disciples don't know. The minute Jesus gave thanks, he activated multiplication. We have come into that season where we are activating our multiplication in the name of Jesus. So, my task here is to charge us, not just this service, but for the rest of our days to live our lives in thanksgiving. I was thinking about it today. Thanksgiving is not a state of mind. Thanksgiving is not a feeling. You don't say, ah, I feel grateful. Thanksgiving is a lifestyle. You live a life of gratitude. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That woman with the alabaster box in Luke chapter 7, verse 47, she had... Oh, I wish, I wish we could put that, up, that scripture up. She had given thanks and she had washed Jesus' feet with, with her tears and wiped it with her hair. And Simon said unto Jesus that if, if only Jesus knew who this woman was. But Jesus said something very critical. I wish we could go there. Let's turn our Bibles to look. Amen. Luke 7, 47. Amen. And behold, a woman, let's jump to 47, 747. Praise God. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. I wish we could put it up in the message version. It brings it home. See, the level of your gratitude directly shows the level of which mercy has been given to you. So if you know that you have received mercy from God, you ought to ought to appreciate him. He says, but she has so that my face, let's skip to the last two pages. She has, she, okay, he says, she has been forgiven many sins and so she is very, very grateful. If the forgiveness is minimal, her gratitude is minimal. So those of us that come with minimal gratitude is because you think that your, the forgiveness you have received is minimal. But Jesus gave absolute he died for you. So the forgiveness you received is not minimal. You don't owe God minimal gratitude. You owe God maximum gratitude. And I want us to read a scripture today. And I'll be closing on this scripture. Amen. Psalm 100. 
I consider this the thanksgiving psalm. I will jump straight into it. It says, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all your lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. You see, David here was teaching us how to give thanks. We've said it is important to give thanks. David now was teaching us how to give thanks. The number one way to give thanks is to make a joyful shout to the Lord. Oh, dear, I see. I expected a louder shout. Hallelujah. He says, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all your lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. In other words, even if the condition around you is not in perfect position, God is saying, serve me with gladness. Have you ever spoken to your child? You, you, your child wants something and you didn't get it and you say, fix your attitude. That's what God is telling us. Fix your attitude, boy. God is telling us, guy, get up. Be glad. Serve me with gladness. He now says, why? Why do I need to serve God and thank God? Verse 3 now says, know that the Lord he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. He says, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And I like verse 4. He says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. You missed a good shouting opportunity there. You missed a good chance there. Let me, take, let me take that again. Let me take that again. He says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. The IC. Hallelujah. Father, we come with thanksgiving and praise. He says, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Church, I want to invite us for one minute to rise up and praise this God. If you know he's been good to you, if you know he's been kind to you, if you know he's watched over you, if you know that God has been faithful, let us appreciate him. Father, we give you thanks. Who are we that you are mindful of us? We bless your name, Jesus. We worship you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you for bringing us into the season of thanksgiving. Father, we worship you. We thank you. We bless your name. And let's thank God. Let's thank God and worship him as we welcome our Father. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. Oh, I will never be ungrateful to you. Will you open your mouth and appreciate him one more time? Celebrate him. He's worthy to be praised. Appreciate him. Give him praise. Give him worship. Give him adoration. Exalt the Lord. is worthy to be praised. Exalt the Lord. is worthy to be honored. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Please, you may be seated. I quite agree with uh, Pastor Micah that our praise, our worship, they're not enough. I must confess to you. And that's the reason why we cannot wait until November, first Sunday in November, before we start it. And there is one thing I want you to know. If somebody is asking you, why were you created? Why do you think God created you? Because to every manufacturer, there is something in the mind of a manufacturer. If there is no purpose, invention will be useless. You agree with me? The one who mag manufactured this microphone has a reason. You can't use it to write. Is to amplify 
my voice in order for you to hear properly. And in case if you don't know, hey, instrumentalists don't go far, please. No, 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 okay. In case you don't know the reason why you are created, I want to beg you. You are created to praise him. These people that I form, they must show forth my praise. And I've said it before. When you see a man trying to tell other people about how powerful he is, how good he's been, how wonderful he is, you look at that individual and say, you are too full of yourself. You don't praise yourself. You allow people to praise you. As powerful as our God is, in that area, he can't praise himself. That's the reason why you and I are created. And Jesus now took it to the next level. He said, in case if you think you are too big to praise him, he has the capacity to make the stone even to take your place. I pray stone will not take your place. Everything God created is to praise him. So, we'll be talking along that area during the praise jubilee. But tonight, two things I want to do here. Or three things. Number one, we're going to praise him. Number two, we're going to look into favor. Number three, which is going to be the number one I'm going to mention. Take stock of your life. From the beginning of this year till this moment, document what God has done for you. If you know how to think what happened to you, you will know how to thank. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Don't worry. Enjoy your seat. I'll call you. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. You'll be sure what the Lord has done. So, this is the time of the year we document our testimony. The one you have shared, the one you have not shared. And when you present it to God, when you are thanking him, he will do much more. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Now, let's go back to the teaching of this morning quickly before we ask the choir to take it off. Psalm 5. There is something peculiar about someone that is going to enjoy favor. It's what we call joy or rejoicing or gladness of heart. Psalm 5 from verse 11. The Bible says, But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you let them shout for what? For joy. Because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. It talks about rejoice. It talks about joy. And it talks about being joyful. There is a connection. Anyone who does not know how to praise will never experience joy. Because joy does not depend on what you have physically in your hand. Joy does not depend on your feeling. Joy is from the heart and is from the almighty God. The Bible didn't say the happiness of the Lord is our strength. What did he say? The joy of the Lord 
is our strength. That is to let you know that this particular joy, there is something about it. And when you are joyful, when you are rejoicing, when you are filled with joy, God will intervene on your behalf. It will take you higher than the situation and circumstance. We heard it from him today. He believed that he's qualified, you know, for that particular position. He knew everybody in the company. But thank God they didn't take it for granted. They began to praise the name of the Lord. He didn't say for a few days, for a few hours. He said for weeks. Eventually, they gave the position to somebody else. But God said, don't worry, boy. Everything works together for the good of those who love him. That is sugar. I'm about to give you honey. Are you following what I'm talking about? May you never trade your honey for sugar. So as you are praising God, he said, God took their status to the next level. And maybe perhaps one of them is bringing them to this country. Amen. Where they don't need to be using uh, this to, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And God situated them powerfully in the country. If they begin to, with the little I know about them, if they, they begin to tell you about something God has done for them in the little year they've been living in this place. Some people who have been living in this country all their life, they don't even have one tenth of it. Somebody say favor. So look at verse 12. As you are rejoicing, as joy becomes your companion, and then you are being joyful. Look at what the Bible says in verse 12. It says, for you, O Lord, we bless the righteous. How? With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. God will bless you. Amen. He will favor you. Amen. I wrote some things down in one of my books, and the Holy Spirit quickened me to check it. Favor, you know, the wonders of favor. This is what I wrote. One of the surest guarantees for a life of unparalleled success is the favor of God. Surest guarantee for unparalleled success is what? The favor of God. Why? Success in life is not as a result of the survival of the fittest. It is the survival of the favored. Are you following what I'm talking about? Success in life is not as a result of the survival of the fittest, but the survival of the favored. My God will favor you. There are people who have what we call multiple of degrees, yet they are living like destitute. Social class or privilege is not a guarantee for success. Many were born with silver spoon in their mouths, yet today they are living from hand to mouth. Favor, somebody say favor. Not frustration is an inheritance of the righteous. You will surround them with favor. In closing today, this is the three things I want us to as we are praising God tonight briefly. If somebody asks you, what is favor? Write it down. It will help you. Maybe one of these days we do a lot of, maybe next year, Jesus tarries. None of us will die before that time. And if he comes to so take us home, we are ready. Everybody say we are ready. Long life prosperity for everyone. But if Jesus come in the rapture physically, we will all rapture with him. But before that, if somebody asks you, what is favor? Write this thing down, it will help you. Favor is the hand of God that helps you. Favor is what? The hand of God that helps you. Psalm 44, verses 1 to 8. So, 
as you are praising God today, as you are rejoicing, as we are filled with joy, the hand of God will come upon us to help us. Understand that. Number two, what is favor? Favor is the face of God that shines on you. Favor is what? The face of God that shines on you. The hand of God that helps you. The face of God that shines on you. I told you in the morning, Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. Numbers, you know, this is how you bless the people of Israel. Declare upon them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Somebody say countenance of God. So the hand of God that helps you. The face of God that shines on you. Number three, favor is the wing, wing of God that carries you up. If he carries the weight of the world upon his shoulder, I know my sister Dari will carry you. It's the wing of God that carries you. Or you can look at it as it's a divine elevator. Are you following what I'm talking about? A divine war elevator. I remember when I left college some years back, I was looking for a job in a, you know, in a city called Lagos. And I went to the Ministry of Internal Affairs. The, you know, the secretariat, they have not moved to Abuja at the time. It was still in Lagos. And I have to climb. I don't know the numbers of the story, but the office where I was going, it was the, in the top of the story. And, you know, even if they say there is electricity, your fear is that when you are in the elevator, you don't want the light to be off. So, somebody said, you better let us climb. By the time we got to the top we are going, we have to sit down and grab our breast. Can you imagine... You are climbing the step, maybe to 30-story building. But if it's an elevator, what happened? It just, what floor? Three, zero. That is favor. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That is favor. One day of favor is what more than the 1,000 day of labor. Is that how they say it? God will favor you. So, the hand of God that helps you, the face of God that shines on you, is a divine elevator, in case if you don't understand what wings is all about. The fine elevator car that carries you above every situation and circumstance of life. When you see a favored man, a favored woman, I tell you something... You, he doesn't need to explain himself to you. You will know that this one is blessed. Wherever you go, wherever you appear, your appearance will smell favor. When a man is favored, things work for him effortlessly. He will not be walking like an elephant and be hitting like an ant. Lead, you know, little effort, plenty results. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus, beginning from now, little effort, plenty result. In the name of Jesus Christ. So when this favor comes on you, it will cause you to rise with ease. To attain heights of success that you could never reach on your home. The Bible says, it is not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Rise up on your feet, choir takeover. I'm coming to that. Now, look at where we wrote, I mean, read in the morning, Psalm 45, about the prophecy concerning Jesus, our role model, our Lord and our Savior. Look at what marked him out. Look at it. He said, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness. You love righteousness and you hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companion. Somebody say favor. favor. 
God is single you out today for promotion. He single you out today for enthronement. He single you out today to bless you. I decree upon you, you will never lack favor again in your life. Favor is the hand of God that helps you. It's the face of God that shines upon you. And it's a divine elevator that will always carry you up and up and up and up. Always remember, there is always the next level with God. Somebody say the next level with God. You've been enjoying his favor or it had to up to this moment. But another, another level of favor is coming upon you to the extent that before the end of the year, even your enemy will acknowledge that your life has been changed for the better. I said your enemy, they will recognize that God has elevated you. Please, I want us to understand. And one of the ways to trigger the oil of gladness, which is the oil of favor, is joy. Rejoicing filled with joy. Rejo it doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There is, God can change your situation for the better. He can change your situation as long as you are with him. There is nothing this God cannot do. There is nothing he cannot do for those who love him. He said everything works together to them that love him. And he now said, eyes have not seen, nor hear her. I see, neither has he ever come to the heart of men. What God has reserved to those who love him. One of them is to favor them. I see favor all around you. I see favor all around your home. I see favor in your business. I see favor in your career. I see favor in all your delays. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Remember this. Anyone who is not into praise and worship, joy will never last. Wake up in the morning and celebrate God. Something happened to me some time, some days ago, some maybe weeks ago, maybe maybe three weeks ago. I, I've never felt like that before. And you know, you better surround yourself with quality people. And I was telling one of our dear sisters in the in the in the church, one of our pastors here, and she just told me, you know, Pastor, I know what you are talking about. My husband always had that kind of experience. I said, I've never had it before. He said, all oh, you need to do any time something like that happen, I just turn on to praise. You know, it has, I, I, I tell you something, I praise more than my personal prayer. I thought I know it all, but God was telling me it is time to go to the next level. It is time to go to the next level of praise. You know what I did? After I, all the song, I you know I wrote them, I you know I I I, I call Pastor Ron. Okay? I said, all oh, your song, come on, I send it to me now. And I, is that not what I did for you? I said, me, oh, all your song, I want it. I have all of them in my in my something. You know, they bought me one. You know, I'm not into technology like many of you. They, are, they call it Echo. Alexa, come on, now, bring me me, oh. Alexa, bring me Ron. Okay? Alexa, bring me, you know, for me. Alexa, bring me the IC. I was playing it before this meeting. It was when I was praising God on my home. The Lord spoke to me, check that book on favor. You, without inspiration, the devil will bring anyone down. Define inspiration is as a result of joy. Even the Bible happens to be a product of inspiration. All scripture were written by what? By the inspiration of God. May you never lose your inspiration. Anytime you sense depression or discouragement around you, you are far off. You can, you can send that demon back to the pit of hell by praising the name of the Lord. Are you following what I'm talking about? You, you need to hear other people singing and join them. So tonight, God has prepared us. Are we ready, choir? Let's dig it, man. 
And remember, what is favor? The hand of God to help you, the face of God to shine upon you, and the divine elevator to carry you up. Come on now, 10 minutes of praise. Heavenly Lord, your name is wonderful. Your name is excellent. Your name is beautiful. I worship you, Lord, for you are mighty. You've got the whole world in your hands. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Lord, your name is wonderful. Your name is excellent. I worship you, Lord, for you are mighty. You've got the whole world. Oh, heavenly Lord, your name is wonderful. Your name is excellent. Your name is beautiful. I worship you, Lord.
thank him begin to appreciate him for the mighty hands of God upon your life for health for the face of God upon your life shining upon you and for the fine elevator elevating you to next level of favor of blessing come on now come on now go ahead celebrate him give him praise give him praise give him praise I wanted to pray before, but the Lord said, I have done it. I have done it. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Thank him for January. 
carry all the blessing, all the waves of his blessings over you, over your family, over the church, DIC, CTMI. Come on in the city, in the state, in your places of war. Celebrate him. He is worthy for February, for March, for April, for May, for June, for July, for August, for September, for October, for the rest of the year, for the rest of our lives. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him. When we thank him for what he has done, he will do greater things. That is a way to have a brighter path, to have a colorful future. Celebrate him. Oh, Baria Katushegelia Garaman Bredia Gaya. Lord, we thank you for the healings, for the healing that is taking place, for the healing that is taking place right now, right now, right now, by the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Thank you for forgiving sins. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us all our sins. Thank you, Lord, for your joy that you have released upon us, for giving us the grace to be filled with your joy, rejoicing in our heart. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lift him, lift him higher. Lift him higher. Lift him higher. Choir, lift him higher. Instrumentalists, lift him higher. Children, lift him higher. Heart, don't lift him higher. Guys, lift him higher. Brothers, lift him higher. Sisters, lift him higher. Come on, come on, pastors, elders. Come on, deacon, deaconesses. Let's lift him higher. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy, worthy, worthy. Neria Gadua Shegelia Rababa, Maria Gaya Yaya Mama Manua Shegelia, Mangrelia Rabadi Asaya Bababa. When we think of the goodness of Jesus, come on now, and all he has done, come on now. Shout The beat. Come on. That wonderful name. Fune 